Welcome to the 6th edition of Sundays with St Edmund's Choir. My name's Charlie Corkin, the Director of Music for St Edmund's Choir, and earlier this week I caught up with Director Emeritus Martin O'Boyle to find out more about how the choir was formed, to talk about our favourite moments, performances or concerts, and the challenges that we face as directors. Hi Martin, how are you doing? I'm great Charlie, how are you? I'm not too bad at all, not too bad. Have you been keeping up to date with the National Theatre stuff or the Andrew Lloyd Webber stuff while we've been cooked up in our houses? Yes, yeah. Um, so what a great start with the National Theatre offering One Man, Two Governors, which I know is a, a play that you and I uh, both enjoyed when it came on yeah, to the North West. And then Andrew Lloyd Webber, of course, I, you know, Phantom is one of my favourites. So I saw that Miss Joseph, but uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, an, an adaptation I hadn't seen before, and it was absolutely marvellous. I think it's been great. The, the staging way it, was fantastic. It, 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 all of it, I thought, was fantastic in terms of the musicality as well. The fact that it was, you know, the, the live orchestra playing on, on stage as well was absolutely incredible. But I think it's just been great the way that cultural organisations have really opened up the doors to engage with the their audiences during this period. Um, it's, it's what the theatre is all about. It is communities coming together and that's been fantastic to see. Yeah, and I suppose in a kind of a very smaller, small way, we've been trying to do something similar by keeping our audiences engaged through the Sundays with St. Edmund's Choir or through the Love to Learn resources that we've been putting out there for kids as well. So I think it's great what you're saying in terms of like the art sector pulling together and getting the stuff that they've either done before or new stuff out there so that people can still be engaged with theatre or music or art. I've been I've been so pleased with what SE Music, St Edmund's Choir have been doing during this period because it has been fantastic. So let's just speak about the resources online for all of those parents who are homeschooling. Um, some of my best mates are mums and dads and they found them incredibly useful. But everything that's been done in terms of Sundays with St Edmund's Choir and the group pieces, like one day more, and what a fantastic response we had to the beautiful Will Todd piece, Like a Rainbow Shining. It was, you know, an exceptional delivery, a uh, beautiful piece of music, and I was just so, so pleased to, to watch it. And it really has lifted the spirits of, of many, many people. I mean, it has been challenging. It's very different from organising a concert or organising music for a service to go from the ordinarily ordinary day-to-day -day plans or month-by-month -month plans that we'd have to moving everything completely online and not meeting each week with our members. So anything that we can do to continue engagement's been great. I mean, personally speaking, it's been great to look back at the old footage from concerts gone by, from performances gone by, and to relive those moments and. I know that we've spoken over the last few weeks about each each of the Sundays with St Edmund's Choir about what our favourite things are. What 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 about you? What were your favourite moments from years gone by, either that we've relived in Sundays with, or or that we haven't been able to capture? I think there's been so many, so it's really really difficult. And I'm going to give the trite answer to begin with of the the very first concert that I did because that's special. I always think that Christmases with St. Edmund's Choir have a really, really special place at the heart of the community. The one that was almost canceled uh, due to the snow, uh, but we kept on going through it and, and, and established great relationships because of it. Um, but the very, very first one uh, is special to me just in terms of getting off the ground with, you know, a little help from my friends and being, being around uh, my dad, um, who was in the choir at that time, and being able to, to conduct him, which is, is I know, a, a privilege yeah. that, that you've got at the moment. But just that special, that special moment, and, and just, you know, I can picture exactly, you know, what I was doing. Didn't have much of a clue. Um, and it was, it was brilliant. Um, and then moving on, we did a fantastic uh, concert in the, the garden of the Lisbonian Room, again, one of our early concerts, which uh, Anna Corcoran guested that, who's been a great friend of the choir. Oh, brilliant. Um, we also did the 2008 Merseyside Melodies concert, which I think was really good for us as a choir to kind of evolve and react to what was going on socially, um, which, which is what we're doing at the moment in terms of this lockdown. But I think um, in terms of 
musical highlights for me, three of the ones that really stand out were the Lottery Concert, because that was just a fantastic concept, a really unique concept. Yeah. And the choir were growing musically at the time, and the demand for the choir was growing as well. So we actually had to put on an extra event because we sold out so quickly. So it really it gave me a tremendous boost to think that, you know, we were growing in popularity. And then we did the songs for the silver screen at the plaza, which was a, a really challenging yeah. venue, but uh, a great, great concert. And uh, just thinking back to seeing everyone's faces smiling during Let's Go Fly a Kite, which is a, a fantastic finale. And then something for everyone um, in St. George's Hall. Fantastic venue. Um, it was full of wonderful musical talent, guest soloists. The, the choir were on top form. It was your birthday. Everyone had a lost, smile yeah. on their face. <laughs> and it was, it was just an absolute joy. I think uh, we've spoken in the past. I think there's a picture of you and I, probably the favourite picture that, uh, of the pair of us is where you're at the piano. I think I'm in a blue polo shirt. Yeah, this, yeah. This is just a huge, huge grin on both of our faces. It, it, it was. It was that type of, of an event. And, and it was great because there was, whoever was in the audience, they would find a piece of music that they would be able to connect with. And because we went through the so many different genres and different varieties of music, and, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? And we're trying to refine that even more so now by making sure that it is for everyone as well as being fun and free which is just as important as I know that you feel as strongly as I do that access to arts and access to music should be free to as many people as possible so yeah and I think that's going to be even more crucial over the coming months and years um you know I do think we're in for some tough times ahead people are going to need the music people are going to need the cultural release people are going to need the friends around them and I think that um, in terms of the financials, it could be a tough time. So keeping it free, fun and for everyone is, is something that, you know, I know will continue. And it's something that I'm, I'm really happy that, that, it, that it is. Yeah. And with, without repeating ourselves too much, it's going back to the arts will continue to keep playing their part during, during this time and beyond it. And as soon as we can get back together to produce live, either concerts or events or productions, we'll be able to do that. I mean, in a dream world with a blank checkbook, who knows what we could put on. And, and I know that you've got thoughts on if you, if you had a blank checkbook, what you would do. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that it's been such a shame over the past 30 years, the way that local musical theatre groups have, have sadly died off. Um, I think that's been, you know, a, a lack of, of membership, uh, but I think that the, the rights for musicals are really difficult to come by. I remember applying for the uh, rights for the Rock Nativity, uh, which was a huge, huge step for the choir, but I realised how expensive and how difficult it yeah. was. Um, but I'd love, I'd love St. Heaven's Choir to do a musical. Uh, probably something like Guys and Dolls, I think, would be great for the membership. But, you know, my dream would be for, for you and I to kind of co-write a bed knobs and broomsticks, even though we probably be <laughs> sued, by, sued by Disney because of it. But I think, I think a musical would be absolutely fantastic for the future. It would, it, it would be great. And it'd be great fun to do as well. And hopefully at some point we'll be able to do something like that. So when, when the choir was first kind of coming together, how did you get the idea to be able to make that happen? Because you you must have either had a, a light bulb moment one day or it must have been encouragement from somewhere. Yeah, so St. Edmunds um, at the time, 1997, was a very different place to where it is now. Um, attendances had really fallen away. and There were a real core group who remained who were really committed. And fortunately, we were blessed with some fantastic musicians. A good friend of mine, Andrew Keelan, who was the parish organist at the age of 12, was working his magic. And Jamie Culshaw, who went to St. Edwards and was a member of the Cathedral Choir and, and myself would, would sing. And further down the line, we, um, we had a little music group organised by Sue Kendall to try and keep the parish together. And that kind of dwindled away. And then I went to Lewards um, with uh, Father Dave Haywards and Father Grant Maddock. Um, and just it was just an, an inspirational time. I mentioned Anna earlier in the conversation. 
she was a member of the group and we had Catherine Last who's in charge of the Make Noise Choir at the oh, brilliant. And um, there's, you know, other, other people as well. Andy Dodd, who was a tremendous influence on the choir in those early years. And I came back, you know, full of inspiration uh, with some absolutely wonderful uh, church music following the time and Lewis and also just a sense of how to, to bring it all together. So with that inspiration and the, the energy, it was just a, a question of gathering some people together. That was the start of it. And then it grew. It grew with people like Steph and Sophie Marr, Lizzie Money, Joan Lawler, Marion Connor, who is you know, still members of the choir. It, it grew and grew from us, you know, being a, a merry band of a, of a dozen or so to to how it how it is at the moment, which is which is absolutely fantastic. How did we get from it being a church based music group to being almost almost like the equivalent of a community choir or a choral society? I think that one of the biggest steps was social media. Um, and I think it was that concert that I referenced earlier, the Christmas concert in the snow. I mean the the support from the local Waterloo community was was absolutely incredible. I think um, it was a case of saying, look, do we still want this to go ahead? And the response was overwhelming. And yeah. what that did was it, it showed that we could reach out. We had a, a new audience and we had a new membership base. Um, and they were attracted by the choir and what we were doing. But also the membership wanted a different challenge as well. So the membership you know, primarily it is a church choir. That's where it's grown from. Yeah. But we want to all sing and experience different styles of music, different types. Our audiences do as well. I mean, yeah. You know, we've just spoken about the, the love of the National Theatre and the musicals. So it was a question of just doing something to keep the choir and the community engaged. One of the challenges that I faced is that actually our membership are getting a bit older now. And how do we make sure that we secure the future of the choir and that's why we launched love to sing and it's been great to have sophie leading on that program to offer this for children not just for adults and uh, as we know it's grown from being zero in october last year to being 30 in march when we sang at your song all together with love to sing and with saint edmund's choir and i think one of my favorite all-time moments is when we did sing at the end of that concert together and we sang when you believe from the Prince of Egypt and just the sounds and the blend of almost a hundred voices coming together was incredible. I really do think that that youth is the key just in terms of the energy and, and the ideas that come. I think having the young people in the choir keeps that that freshness. Um, I mean if you think about it, um, you know, when the choir started, I think it was I was 17, I think you were probably 21, 22. When, when you yeah. became director. And I just think that having that, you know, enthusiasm just drives on so many people and having that younger base of, of membership is, is important too. It kind of makes everyone feel that more positive, that more full, rejuvenated in, in rehearsals when you're experiencing things for the first time. And it, it's just great to see how even in the short space of time that I have been director, that has grown and, going back to the idea of the Waterloo community it's as if that community that we've created that audience we've created around Waterloo is expanding and it's fantastic I mean one of the one of my favorite concerts as well um, not directing was at the Crits um, because it was just fantastic for me to sit back and like whatever time you've given me director emeritus or whatever it is now and, uh, and just listen to it but listen appreciate it be able to be relaxed because you never ever relax as a director require in, <laughs> in a concert but also see the reactions of people around from the audience you know when you're conducting the choir you've got your back to them for the majority of the songs and that was a special moment in the crypts the acoustics were fantastic yeah and and it was just a real sense of togetherness at that concert and that will stay with me for a long time it was a real symbol of how the, the choir continues to grow I mean, you said about having your backs to the audience and it's one of one of the things that I find most frustrating, especially when you've worked on a piece of music that's particularly difficult or you've spent a particularly long time doing and you want to see what people's reactions are as it's happening and you can't and it drives you insane. 
and in particular the 12 days of Christmas which we did last year where we went from singing the traditional tune to going through We Three Kings to Bohemian Rhapsody to the Can Can to the Hallelujah Chorus and not being able to see people's reactions was probably one of the most frustrating moments <laughs> of any concert that I've ever done. I was too scared not to be looking at you to look at the audience. <laughs> <laughs> but the payoff, the payoff from that is that when you when you you director, you you have this this absolute privilege to be looking at the choir. Yeah, and they want to be yeah. looking at you because more than ninety percent of them are looking at the coffees, even though you've been telling <laughs> yeah. them week after week to look at you. But. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's almost like, you know, driving a car, you know, you know, yeah. when to push your foot on the gas to get that little bit more out of them, you know, and to ease them back in and, and, and just the, the culmination of all those rehearsals in a, in a performance environment and just hearing that is, is absolutely spine tingling. And I, I certainly wouldn't swap any of my 20 years as director for the world. It was, you know, an incredible, incredible privilege. So aside from all of the brilliant moments with concerts and events and performances, there must have been challenges that you faced along the way, similarly to myself at the moment, where the, there were moments where you did struggle with either creating a concert or a production or even mass on a Sunday morning. I mean, yeah, I mean, the very, very first mass that, that we did, um, August 1997, you know, we'd... Uh, We've been rehearsing this like joyous musical opening of this, you know, four friends group, and uh, yeah, and then Princess Diana died, um, so everything had to be changed. So it kind of set the precedent for St. Edmund's Choir doing things on the fly, which is something that's lasted for, <laughs> for twenty odd years since. Um, but you, you are right; everything does bring its own challenges, um, whether it's a ticket sales for a concert, whether it's yeah. a, a piece of music. Um, I always think back to the one that we did in the lottery concert, the uh, the Les Mis medley, which lasted for about three <laughs> years. That that was that was bonkers, particularly you know for for musicians who who don't sight read, and, yeah. and that's that's the thing you always giving the the members that encouragement is 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 the key. Um, but I think that the two the two biggest challenges. I, I, there was someone really famous who said about you know you've got to know when to leave a party. And you've got to know when to arrive at a party, probably the other way around. But um, I, I feel like the, the timing of starting the choir was 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 perfect. You know, I had the the energy, the enthusiasm, the the ideas. Uh, but growing it from that was was incredibly difficult. But also probably the toughest part, tougher than 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 anything, any concert was, you know, giving it up was was letting it go um and you know first and foremost i had someone great to give it up to namely you even though i do remember your expression when i first <laughs> mooted that when I was driving in the car. um and the second thing was just like the work commitments you know if you if you want to if you want to do something do it properly is my yeah. motto and, and and i couldn't just because of the work commitments but it was still still in, incredibly hard to to kind of to kind of give it up but you know i had 20 20 great years and i think i said before i wouldn't wouldn't swap that for anything yeah it was it was daunting when you when we would i think we were going to see a play in saint helens and and we were in the car and we were going for a chinese beforehand when you when you told me and i just remember this weight being put on myself <laughs> and, not, and not really knowing how to respond and being quite nervous and daunted by the whole idea of it because we, <laughs> we i think we just we just done another concert in st george's hall which i think it was the concert that you weren't able to make that's right due to i think you were in japan or somewhere and I, it was my first concert and i thought okay great breath of fresh air now i can have a bit of a break and lo and behold the answer to that was no i can't yeah, as the weight was being lifted from my shoulders <laughs> it was being passed on beautifully yeah. to yours and it's been there ever since yeah yeah, I mean, I'm very lucky. I've got I've got a brilliant support team behind me, and and Catherine's been there since since that concert in St George's Hall, and now we've got Sophie on board, and it and it is great. We do work together really well as a team, and and that that's been an incredible support 
for me where it's not just everything resting on my shoulders all the time. No, and it's great that the, the encouragement that they give to you and, and you give to them as well. But it, it, it's been a fantastic journey that, that the choir has been on and hopefully in the not too distant future we'll be able to continue that, especially as we're heading towards, which will be, it seems like a while off now, but it'll come, it'll come very quickly that actually the choir turns 25 in a couple of years' time and with this summer's concert cancelled, it's actually only five concerts away or something like that as it stands at the moment. And hopefully we can come back and bring people back and have a, a real fantastic celebration because I think it's what people and the community and, and the choir absolutely deserve. Yeah, and then as I mean, as we're planning at the moment for what we're going to do at Christmas, so which for some people might seem like that's a while off, but I think at this time it's it's really important. And I suppose the message at the moment is there will be a Christmas concert of, of some sort this year, but we're not going to let the current climate and the current situation get in the way of that we we've never missed a christmas concert although there was that time when it when it snowed and what the community wanted was music and as as long as we can we'll continue to do that for people yeah and again it's it's so important it whether you know it's going to be streamed for for people or hopefully we'll be back to normal by then and people can give each other a hug uh, at Christmas yeah. time, it remains, it remains to be seen. But yeah, you know, we're going to be there for for everyone, like through the good times and bad. You know, it's yeah, it's you know what what it's what we do. It's what we do. Yeah. Whether we sing at weddings or funerals or the celebrations, you know, we have been a big part in 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 people's lives. You know, the choir, the choir sang. You know, on the happiest day of my life, which was my wedding, which was again not a performance. I, 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 required, I remember. But, <laughs> it was a fantastic <laughs> event and then you know the lows as well they were there to support me during you know my dad's funeral family yeah. funerals as well and, and and that that means a heck of a lot yeah so it's been great to catch up with you anyway and i'm glad that you've enjoying the sundays with saint edmund's choir on on a sunday evening and i'm glad that your friends are enjoying the love to learn resources as well with no. their little ones no keep it up keep it up everyone so Thanks very much, and uh, yeah, don't stop the music. Yeah.